a small goal. I want to talk about the universe, but particularly um, the two great pillars of our understanding of the universe that we've built over the last century. And we're still building absolutely now two of those pillars that I hope you're going to contribute to building in the future. Um, the two pillars, uh, two things that maybe you don't learn about at school, but you'll certainly learn about at university. What, one pillar is called relativity, which is Einstein's great contribution to science. And the other one is something called quantum mechanics which is a fascinating theory. It seems very strange. You may have heard of things like Schrodinger's cats. Things can be in two places at once. But actually, quantum mechanics is our theory of everything that happens in the universe other than gravity. And it, today, the place where we explore that in detail is the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Geneva, the place that I work when I'm not messing around on television. So I want to give you some idea of what we're doing now at the Large Hadron Collider and what we hope to discover within the next year or two. So absolutely current cutting edge research. But the first thing I think to say about the, the ambition, because I said we want to understand the universe and our two great theories of it, is to look at the sheer size of the problem. And that's one of the things that I think captured my imagination first when I first began to get into science, very when I was five, six, seven years old. It was the sheer ambition of it. Because this is a picture of the universe. This is actually a picture of the night sky. If any of you are interested in astronomy, that thing up there is the constellation of Orion that you can always see in the winter sky. But I want to f focus, I want you to focus on a piece of sky that's somewhere around here. I'm going to zoom in on it now. It's a piece of sky that you would cover if you took a five pence piece and held it about 25 metres away. So imagine taking a five pence piece and putting it 25 metres away over a tiny piece of sky. Well, a few years ago now, the Hubble te Space Telescope, which is in orbit around the Earth, turned its gaze to that tiny piece of sky, the five pence piece bit of sky, and took a picture. It opened its camera shutter for thousands and thousands and thousands of seconds and just gathered the light from that piece of sky. It was deliberately chosen because it's a dull, uninteresting piece of sky. Actually, from the surface of the Earth, you would see virtually nothing in it at all. But this is the picture that Hubble took and you see that it's anything but empty. It's called the Hubble Deep Field image. It's one of the most important and fascinating images in the recent history of astronomy. Um, it's not empty. It's got lots of structure, lots of points of light in. There are actually over 10,000 points of light or blobs in that image. And virtually every one of them, over 10,000 of them, are actually galaxies, distant galaxies. So they're not stars, they're galaxies. Now, those galaxies on average have, what, 100,000 million stars like our sun in them, at least. So 100,000 million stars in each one of those 10,000 blobs. The most distant object in that image, and I'm going to talk a bit about how we know these things in a moment, but the most distant object is 13.2 thousand million light years away. It was actually discovered in this image only a few months ago. Now, light travels at 300,000 uh, kilometers per second, 186,000 miles a second. And at that speed, it's taken over 13 billion years to travel from the most distant object in that image to Earth, to the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, when you think that the Earth is only just under 5 billion years old, it means that most of the light from most of the galaxies in that image began their journey, began its journey to Earth before there was an Earth. And for some of the most distant galaxies there, they were over halfway here when the solar system was just a cloud of gas and dust. It hadn't yet coalesced into the sun and the planets and moons of the solar system. So imagine what that looks like. That's a tiny, remember, five pence piece, piece of sky 25 meters away. Imagine what that looks like when you extend it over the entire sky. Well, this is a beautiful map of the observable universe. Every dot on that map is a galaxy with 100 billion stars like our sun in it, at least. They're, you see that the structure in there, they're not randomly distributed. It's very interesting. I'm going to show right at the end of the talk that we think we're beginning to understand where that structure came from. Just to get some sense of scale, that little line up there, you might not even be able to see it in the back, but that's the one billion light year line. So light takes a billion years to travel from one end of that line to the other. This is the observable universe. And I'm going to show you, there's a ridiculous number that I have to show you. It's better to show it than say it. Um, this is the number of stars that we think are in the observable, well, we know from observation are in the observable universe at the moment. 30,000 million, million, million stars. 
uh, just like our sun, some bigger, some smaller. 350 billion large galaxies, 7,000 billion smaller dwarf galaxies. That's the observable bit of the universe. We have pretty strong evidence now the universe is significantly bigger than that, but we can just see this blob surrounding us, the blob from which light has had chance to travel during the history of the universe.